Thank you for stopping by Ballistic Barbecue. On today's video, I'm going to be cooking up two absolutely gorgeous USDA Prime Tomahawk ribeyes at 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's get going. So I wasn't clickbaiting the title. I'm actually going to be cooking those tomahawks at 1500 degrees. And we're going to be doing that using the blazing bull. This is it right here. It is uh, basically an overhead broiler using Schwenk infrared technology. And Schwenk infrared technology is what's used in some of the top chop houses in the world, including Morton's and a few others. Uh, so this is the real deal. This is basically the closest we can get to you know, high-end restaurant technology in our homes. So I'm really excited about cooking on this. I actually have a similar product, so I am familiar with how to cook on this type of device. So uh, I can tell you this, the build quality of this thing is amazing. So I know I'm going to be asked, I don't want to forget, this thing is made in the US. So it's American made all the way. It's a uh, 304 stainless steel, the construction of this thing. Uh, again, uh, it's, it's built like a clock, it's a kind of a poor comparison, but it's, it's really high quality build. Um, the other thing is, is unlike the other competitors, this thing has a US UL listing. So it went through some rigorous safety tests in order to get that uh, listing here in the US. So it's a high tech device, but actually pretty basic, I guess, in design. So this runs off a of liquid propane gas and up here at the top, you can see those ceramic infrared burners. Comes with a stainless steel tool for pulling out the shelf and the thing I again one more comparison to the other brands uh, this actually has a stopper to prevent it from coming out all the way you know some of the other brands you have to hold this with a, the free hand while you're you know manipulating the stakes flipping the stakes whatever it also has a drip tray and shelf that removes so there's a lever on the side where you can lift this up to different levels. There's actually seven levels. Number seven is at 1500 degree zone. Then each descending level is a lower temperature. The manual tells you what temperature these zones are. So getting this thing fired up is really easy. You have the, your gas knob here. You push it down, give it a turn, let it run for a good three seconds or so. Then right here you have the igniter. It's just an electric igniter. Push that and it's lit. Hold this for an additional, you know, five seconds or so. And it's lit. So in about five minutes, this thing's going to be roaring at 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. Then we're going to cook some steaks. Okay, five minutes later, the blazing bull is raring to go. Again, 1500 degrees at its hottest point. Before we start cooking, I want to show you these steaks. So as I said earlier, two three and a quarter pound USDA prime tomahawk ribeye steaks. These things, I, they're magnificent. Now you can see that kind of ruby red color they have right now. Basically, this is my preference. When I'm cooking on a system like this, the last thing I'm gonna do is hit it with a bunch of rubs because they're gonna burn. I mean, the rub's going to burn at, at this old uber hot temperature. Um, Two things I'll do, you know, I'll hit it with some salt and cook it. If I was just cooking a couple, you know, one inch thick steaks, I'd hit them with salt, no problem, grill them up. Another option is to not season them at all and then finish it with a nice, like a flaked Malden salt or something. What I did on these steaks was last night I dry brined them. I dry brined them overnight. So last night I went ahead and seasoned these with uh, some coarse ground kosher salt on this rack here this rack that they're sitting on right now, place them in the refrigerator without anything covering them and just let the salt do its work. The amount of salt I used was the amount of salt that I would use if I were just seasoning a steak you know, to eat. Um, so what happens is the salts overnight, th they're basically bringing the moisture out of the steak and then the salt's dissolving and then the steak, the meat's bringing the moisture back in. So what you end up with is just the perfectly salted steak. Um, this is very rapidly turned into my favorite way of seasoning, seasoning a steak. Let's cook. Now, if I were cooking two, again, like I mentioned earlier, one inch thick steaks, the cooking technique would be much different than I'm going to do today. 
basically what it would look like is throw the steaks on the grill, raise it up to level one, as close as I could get it to that burner. Two minutes on each side, done. With these Goliaths, <laughs> I mean, these things are huge. It's gonna take a little bit more finesse. So first thing I'm going to do is lay these bad boys on here. Get it in the cooker. And we're going to raise it as high as we can, as close as we can to that burner. Right there we're on level number five. We're going to hold this here for one minute. Now while that's going, I have here some unsalted butter. I'm going to throw in that drip, pit, drip pan. Little thyme, little rosemary. We'll let the meat juices drip on all this fatty goodness down below. And I did allow these steaks to set out and come up to room temperature. Right there's one minute. See, they're looking gorgeous already. Just back in. And raise it up to number five again. We're going to keep these here for another minute. All right. One more minute's passed. Look at that. I'm going to go ahead and flip them again. So another minute here. All right, minutes passed. Gorgeous. Flip. Raise it up again. So of course, one more minute. All right, one minute's passed. Go ahead and pull this tray out. Just look at this, guys. All right, so we don't want to serve raw bones, obviously. So. So I'm going to leave the tray out like it is, and I'm just going to raise these up. Number five again. We'll probably do this for another minute or so, each side. Dim bones are done. Pull these off just for a sec here. Raise that back up. Pull this out. So this is all that drippings, the goodness from the steaks, as well as the butter and those herbs. So now I'm going to go ahead and drop in a probe here. All right now the grill grate is up, which is stainless steel. I'm going to slide these underneath. And essentially this, this grill grate is going to act as a diffuser. It's going to kind of mellow out the heat that's coming down on these steaks. At this point, I'm just going to monitor the temp. Um, I'll probably give them a flip a few times though. Again, I want that nice even cooking. There's still a little bit of grease up in this, uh, say, goodness up on this grate that's dripping down on the steaks as well. Not to mention it's bathing in that bath of, of fat and butter and herbs. It's gonna be good. All right, go ahead and flip this. All right, so this steak here just hit 125. Beautiful. So I'm gonna go ahead and start resting this one here. This one's actually very close to being done as well. All right, 125 it is. So we're gonna let these rest probably 15 minutes or so, give you guys a try. 
and here we are. Just a thing of beauty right there, boys and girls. <laughs> smells really good. Let's try this out. This is the thicker one. I'm going to slice this one. So I always like to remove these from the bone. There we go. <laughs> that is nice. So look at this, top to bottom, medium rare. And I achieved this, you know, without that really like quarter inch thick gray halo, because I finished these steaks off underneath that, the grate, the grill grate, you know, again, in that drip pan full of goodness. And I just kept flipping them. I kept flipping them. I cooked these gently with a 1500 degree plasma ball raging above everything um, smells really good again this is a sear you just can't get on every grill out there tender i'm thrilled with this cook right now let's give this a go And look at that, perfect medium rare, juicy as all get out. Nice crust. Mm. Wow. <laughs> wow. Just wow. Um, so first things first, that was one of the juiciest steaks that I've ever had, ever. Um, I, I'm being 100% honest when I say that. Um, my thoughts on the Blazing Bull. My friend, you have a home here. Uh, I can see myself doing some reverse sears on this without a doubt again the the thinner steaks a total of four minutes to get them done i mean how can you beat that um, it's not a one trick pony there's a ton of of videos using this and um, the other similar systems out there where they're cooking steaks i can tell you that the other day i cooked a, a personal size pizza homemade pizza from scratch it was beautiful I also cooked up a swordfish steak the other night for dinner. Again, gorgeous. Uh, very happy with this. There's actually a lot more control that you have over temperatures than you would, than you would believe. Fire truck rolling. There's a big giant fire just east of us. Um, the, it's called the Valley Fire if you look it up on the news. Uh, anyway, guys, thanks for stopping by. Um, again, keep those suggestions rolling in. If you're not subscribed, take a moment, subscribe please, it's free. Make sure you hit that, so the uh, notification bell so you get notified every time there's a new upload. If you like the video, thumb it up. See you on the next video. Let me see, we're drinking New Belgium Voodoo Ranger. It's a juicy IPA. And this stuff is really, really good. It's uh, anything from New, New Belgium is good. Anyway, see you on the next video. Cheers.